And great job. Today my sermon is titled, Faith Changes Everything. And if you notice, the last few Sundays, faith is the overarching theme of our scripture verses. And by the way, before I speak more about faith, if you like the number seven, today is your day. Because this is the seventh day of the seventh month. This is the seventh Sunday after Pentecost. And my sermon is seven minutes long. Just kidding. (laughs) You wish. You wish the sermon was seven minutes long. But I have a lot to say about faith today. And we have a very interesting gospel reading that's confusing to a lot of people, mysterious to Bible scholars. And let me just tell the story briefly in my own words. Turns out one day Jesus is going back to his hometown. And when he gets there, he's amazed at their unbelief. He is very upset about their lack of faith. They are cynical, they are negative, they're not open to God working in in their lives, Uh, they don't care to hear the word of God, and this is Jesus' very hometown, and he's very, very upset at the reception he finds there. They are just so cold-hearted and unbelieving and negative and down, and you name it, that's what they were, distant from God, not close at all. And Mark records Jesus' reaction to their unbelief, their negativity, their cynical response. And it's right there on the monitor if you want to take a closer look. Mark says, And Jesus could do no deed of power there. He was amazed at their unbelief. Now, if you look closely at the artist's depiction on the monitor, you're going to see a very sad-looking Jesus, very dejected Jesus, very disappointed Jesus. He's looking down at the ground. He, he, just, he just cannot imagine how negative and unbelieving these people really are. And he just feels really bad about that. Now, look closely at the first line. It says, Jesus could do no deed of power there. Did you know that in the miracle stories, faith is always in the mix? Faith is the catalyst. Faith is there. So Jesus comes into an unfaithful area. It says he could do no deed. Now, if you look closely at the original Greek, the translation is really he would do no deed of power. Big difference there. Now, a lot of you are familiar with the Superman story. Now, what happens when Superman gets close to kryptonite? What happens? He gets weak. He loses his superpowers. He he can't rise to the occasion and be the strong superpower that he is. A lot of people misinterpret this Bible verse. They think, well, if there's no faith, then Jesus becomes weak, and Jesus can't be the super Jesus that we know and love. That's not the case at all. Because we all know that Jesus was a co-creator of the universe with God the Father. There's no way Jesus could be weak. But he chose not to perform miracles. He would not do deeds of power in a context of unbelief, cynicism, and negativity. That's the interpretation. He said, all right, you folks, if you're going to be so negative, if you're going to be so distant with God that I am not performing miracles in this place. That's strong, isn't it? Very strong. What is, what is Jesus saying here? Jesus is saying, wherever you are, whatever circumstances you're in, bring faith to the table. I'll say it again. Bring faith to the table. No matter how bleak your circumstances are, no matter how negative things are around you, no matter how dark and dreary life may look to you, still bring faith to the table. Because in this story, they were not bringing faith to the table. They were not approaching Jesus in the spirit of faith. And Jesus was very, very upset about that. A faith community not bringing faith to the table. Sadly ironic. Many of you know that for several years, years ago, I was a a substitute preacher. And the joke in the bishop's office 
is that I preached in every Lutheran congregation north of Trenton. And I, I believe that's true. Did you know that once in a while I'd go into a faith community and I wasn't picking up on faith? The way Jesus walked into this community and there was no faith. I would walk into certain congregations and the morale was terrible. The people were, just had this sour look on their faces. There was no joy there. There were no children in Sunday school. You open up the bulletin and nothing's going on because nothing is listed for activities and things to do. And I thought, man, they should just have a sign on the outside of this church saying, welcome to Titanic Lutheran Church. Because you know what they were doing? They were rearranging chairs on the Titanic. And I heard things from certain congregations. I heard things like, oh, that'll never change, and what's the use of trying, and well, we don't have this, and we can't do that, and that'll never happen. And you know what? In certain congregations, that negativity spread like a dangerous cancer. That negativity pervaded the, the congregation. You would walk in and you would sense that these people are not on fire for Jesus Christ. This was years ago. And guess what? Every congregation I went in where I got that feeling, guess where they are now? They're closed. They closed their doors. They just said, enough is enough. We're not trying, but the worst part is they didn't believe in a resurrection of their mission. They just closed. Jesus is saying here, no matter how difficult things are, bring faith to the table. Faith is always part of miracles. Faith is part of turnarounds. Faith is always there when things turn out better. It's all about holding on to faith. You know, we just celebrated our Independence Day for this country, right? Now, I want you to travel back in your imagination to 1776, when our founding fathers first signed the, the Declaration of Independence. They had tremendous faith. Think about the faith. It was faith that caused them to move forward. What if Benjamin Franklin said, oh, there's no use in doing this. We're no match for the, the British Army. Let's just all go home and put up with it. What if George Washington, back on 1776 and now on that hot Philadelphia day, what if George Washington said, oh, we can't face their army. We're going to be like lambs led to the slaughter. What if John Hancock said, oh, I'll sign that thing, but I'm going to sign my name really small so no one will know who I am. What if Thomas Jefferson said, oh, this is a waste of my time drafting this Declaration of Independence. Nothing's going to change. Nothing's ever going to matter. We're not going to win our freedom and independence. What if they all brought negativity to Philadelphia on that hot week in 1776? No, it was, it was quite the opposite. These men had faith in their hearts. They had hope in their breasts. And I'm willing to say that faith is the bedrock of the United States of America. Because what makes this country great and what has survived the crises moments over the years was faith. It was about faith and a determination to move forward and never, ever give up, no matter how difficult the circumstances would be. I love the story of John Paul Jones, the battle at sea, when his naval vessel was being pummeled with cannon fire, left and right, forward and back. You looked at the sails, and the sails were ripped to shreds, looking like a piece of Swiss cheese. And the opposing captain sneered and said, are you ready to give up? Are you ready to call it quits? And John Paul Jones stood there in the middle of the fire, and said the now famous words, I have not yet begun to fight. And he prevailed. Faith is what won the day. He could have given up, but faith won the day. And then there was the Civil War. 
You may recall from history that at the very beginning of the Civil War, the Confederates were kicking the tar out of the Union soldiers. What if Abraham Lincoln said, oh, it's a lost cause, we're going to divide up, we're going to have a north and a south, it's not worth it. No, Abraham Lincoln said, we will stand up, we will get stronger, we will fight, and we will preserve the Union. In faith, he said that. And the Union prevailed. And then later, in our nation's history, one of the deepest, darkest moments in our economy, known now as the Great Depression. People were lucky to have two nickels to rub together. People were lined up in bread lines, out of work, depressed, despondent. But our, our president stood up and said, we have nothing to fear but fear itself. Those are words of faith. He was saying, Roosevelt was saying, we can stand up again. We can get stronger again. We can try new things. We can employ people. We will stand up as the United States of America and be stronger than when we were before. That was faith, the bedrock of the United States of America. And I could go on and on and on. What about those brave men who stormed the beaches of Normandy during World War II? That had to be one of the scariest moments in history. The Germans are on high ground. They're firing down. And those who stormed the beach, trying to climb the hill, they were dropping left and right like flies. But the men who were still standing kept moving forward. They kept moving forward. They kept moving forward because they believed in what they were doing. And they had faith in their hearts and courage in their souls. They didn't turn around and leave. They, made, they went forward saying, we refuse to give up under these circumstances. What I'm saying to you is faith is the bedrock of this country, and it has been over and over and over again. Hope is our very lifeblood of the United States of America. And the day we lose faith, and the day we lose hope, we're in deep trouble, because that has sustained us for almost 250 years. I go back again to Philadelphia, 1776, when those men had faith in their hearts and refused to believe that they would lose. They are going to win. And we did win. Jesus said, bring faith to your circumstances. No matter how difficult your circumstances are, no matter how, how bleak your life may look, bring faith because God can do anything. God is the creator of the universe. And God has blessed this country way beyond what we thought God could do at certain times and in certain places. Bring faith to the table. And so, I challenge you right now, what are you going to do? You have a choice in your life. You can choose to be negative. You can choose to be pessimistic. You can choose to see all the dark spots of your life and all the things that aren't going right. Or you can choose to bring faith to your table. I'm telling you right now, your life will be much better if you bring faith to whatever circumstance you find yourself in. There's never a lost cause when you bring faith to the table. If the doctor gives you a very scary report, bring your faith to that table. If you lose your job and you're not sure where, what you're going to do next, bring faith to your future. And when you look at the history of the United States of America, you can say, God bless America as God has blessed America. And God has given us the faith to, to climb every mountain and the faith to overcome obstacles in our way. We are Americans and we have faith. 
and we will not back down under any circumstance. Faith is the bedrock of who we are and who we will be. Let's rise to the occasion in every circumstance with faith in our hearts and belief in our breasts. You may think I'm corny for saying this, but one of my favorite stories is the story about Rocky Balboa, the fictitious boxer from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. The thing I love about Rocky is the guts, the determination, the raw faith that even when he was knocked down on the canvas, he had the will to stand back up again. He had the desire in his heart. He had the determination to keep going, keep going. Even though his, his legs were weakening and he was getting dizzy and he had hardly any ounce of energy left, he kept standing. And that's what people of faith do. We keep standing. We keep moving forward. And we believe that with God, all things are possible. May God give you a generous share of faith as you reflect upon Independence Day weekend. May God bless America. Thanks be to God. Amen. May the peace of God, which surpasses all human understanding, keep our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen.